dive into it. Um, so, you know, we obviously, you know, if you haven't seen the article, um, you know, hop over to agoric.com slash blog. It's the first thing there. You'll, you'll see a really nice kind of overview of everything that went down in 2022. Um, and, you know, this is our first community call of 2023. So I think it's kind of right that we talk about some of the things that we're working on now and, you know, short and midterm. And, um, you know, one of the big ones uh, that most are familiar with is Mainnet 2, right? The release of uh, permission smart contracts and, and, and really where we start to see, um, you know, projects launch on Agoric, um, a, a wide variety of projects that are actively building right now. And that is also on our blog, <laughs> uh, if you want to read up on some of these projects. But, um, you know, Dean, I, I have you here. I, I wonder if, if there's anything we want to talk about around kind of mainnet two. And, you know, it's been a topic we've discussed in the past. It's, it's nothing new. But, um, you know, maybe some some of where we are and, um, you know, Roland, feel free to jump in on this as well. But I think, a, yeah, some overview of, of, of what's coming up with Mainnet 2 would be cool. Well, I, I'll do the, the very high level. I mean, so, so you know, as you say, 2023 has um, two big things, you know, uh, um, that, that, that show up uh, on the way to the end of it. The first is is going to be our vaults release and the second is this is mainnet uh mainnet two um last year we we talked about the five projects uh that are building on the platform now when we do this next release actually i guess uh roland you should jump in right when we do this next release it will have some of the key features that they'll need to be able to roll out um uh and then you know so so after we get uh, uh vaults out you know, vaults will will have a significant, I think, impact on the Cosmoverse. Well, you know, on the on, on the interchain where um, people will be able to bring their atom or you know whatever uh, tokens um, uh, the the Econ Committee, um, uh, you know, or the rather the the community uh, decides on and and mint IST. And we've already got IST deployed, you know, available in a bunch of different places. But with Mainnet 2 coming out, there's a bunch of applications on the Agoric chain itself that will directly use IST, um, not just on, mm. you know, and, and IST will be used on other chains. But just having some of those start to roll out on Agoric is going to be uh, is going to be very exciting. So I want to take a step back just quickly for, for those in the audience, too. So um, this, the Vault smart contract includes, if I understood this correctly, it's going to include technology that these other projects launching on Agoric will utilize. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, I, I'm happy to jump in here, Santi. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, actually maybe it's, it's worth going through sort of more specifically what's, what's coming up in this next release. And then we can talk about how that affects uh, and enhances the third party contracts that, and projects that are. I think I lost Roland. I will continue his thought there. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he'll come back as soon as he's here. Um, uh, technical difficulties. Um, so, so this next release. So, so it is the you know we we already have in place running JavaScript contracts. Um, the next release it will be uh, what I've talked about before is the bulldozer bulldozer release where we launch a new slightly deeper stack that has the running contracts. It has support for. Um, contract governance to be able to upgrade contracts and for um, the the interesting state of the contracts all you know the, the the JavaScript state of the contracts to be durable across those upgrades which is to say you know you can have a relationship between contracts where you know uh, um, like the vault contract is holding on to um, to a liquidator contract and when the vault gets upgraded it's running new software that still gets to act gets access to the very same liquidator contract that it was created with or users wallets are holding on to a vault object so that they can manage their vault and the vault gets upgraded, the users still have access to their vault objects in the new contract. Um, and so that kind of upgradability, fine grain upgradability with fine grain objects and relationships between contracts is, is just, you know, is just astonishing. It's just, it's amazing stuff. Um, it's been one of the the, the, the big technical challenges and you know we've now got contracts that have, we, we've had contracts that have been using it but we're getting the general support all robust and and and, and uh, deployed so that third-party contracts uh, can use it so 
that's that that's pretty cool. Um, we're very excited about that, and that's what will get us to the point of of having one round of of of, of what I refer to as the bulldozer upgrade of launching a whole new JavaScript stack and relaunching all the contracts to where now individual contracts can be individually upgraded without it being a, a chain overhaul. And all of that, each contract opts into what governance will decide to upgrade it. So it can have, it can, you know, the, be the, decide that it's the builder now that votes to upgrade it like we do with vaults. Or it could be that a particular third party contract has their own token uh, that would vote to upgrade it or elects a committee that, that, that can control whether upgrades happen or whether pauses happen to see, you know, to 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 investigate, um, uh, 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 you know, any issues in the contract or that kind of thing. So that's that's the kind of stuff that people have wanted in a wide variety of smart contract platforms. And we're getting to and, and we're getting the reusable components to do that and using them inside, for example, the vaults and intercontracts. Are you back with us, Roland? Well, so that, that helps a lot, Dean, clarifying that. Right. Yeah. It, it's not that it is mainnet 2. It is a major kind of smart contract overhaul and upgrade. That's right. Um, yeah. Independent, right? Yeah, it this is mainnet 1. This is still in the mainnet 1 right. uh, family, the, the second step of mainnet 1. The other piece of this is expanding the smart wallet capability. Um, uh, you know, previously it was just enough so you could, um, you know, Bring your bring your your USDC over, bring your atom over, you know, do trades in the uh, in the PSM. But again, with the next generation of contracts, um, now it's not only that you do instantaneous trades where I you know offer some USDC and I get back some IST, or I offer you know I, I do a, a swap with someone or have you. But it is the uh, but 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 it supports the long running engagement with the contracts. So you know. Ie vaults, but also it could be order books or 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 um, you know the NFT infrastructure that that that, that several of our mainnet two folks are bringing. Um, but being able to have in my wallet an object that has multiple things I can do with it, so I can make additional offers to change uh, my collateralization in my vault. I can I can do you know I can close it, I can sell it, I can borrow more, all those kinds of things, and that's an ongoing interaction with this vault instance that is a that, that is a you know object written in javascript inside of the vault contract that i alone have a unique reference to that will survive upgrades and will will let me interact with this on a you know ongoing you know uh basis so um so that 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 those extensions to the wallet not only the wallet uh contract but also the wallet user interface um those are in there um and then uh and then of course we have all the, the the additional components, durable governance, and then the the mechanisms for IST that we'll talk about sort of the detailed relationships in the IST call, but um, the vault interface with refreshed UI, people have seen a user interface um, that we did sort of the MVP user interface in our various test nets last year, um, that, that's been uh, um, uh, 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 revamped with um, help from some friends at, at, at a company called Echo. Um, the, um, uh, the first Oracle chain that uh, simply staking and other validator and, and, and Oracle node operators have been driving forward. Um, so, so we will have Oracles for vaults for liquidation, and those will also be available in the future for additional uh, uh, smart contracts. Um, an auction-based liquidation mechanism. So previously, uh, um, uh, previously, we were doing, uh, uh, we, 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 we have all the implementation to liquidate against a local AMM, but um, as you say, we are, um, uh, uh, we, 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 we um, are not rolling out an AMM um, in, in this time frame. You know, we, we work closely with, um, uh, with you know, Osmosis and Crescent and, and, and others. And so the liquidation mechanism will be uh, uh, auction-based liquidation and all those contracts are, are going out. So, so those are really exciting. Now we, we learned a lot um, about performance, scaling, working with the community, getting releases out, that sort of thing with the, uh, you know, in the inter-protocol rollout. Um, uh, and so, um, uh, you know, similarly, we expect to learn more here, but this really will give us, you know, we're, we're now able to support, you know, more transactions, larger user sets, et cetera. So um, we're very excited about this. Um, so that's, that's this release that's coming up, um, uh, uh, you know, th that we're working on for uh, this first quarter. And then mainnet two um, follows after that. 
So all of this infrastructure is required for mainnet two. All of these elements that we're rolling out are things that the um, uh, 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 that the mainnet two folks um, uh, 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 are building on top of and starting to now you know up update their applications to use these new facilities, um, to use the new wallet infrastructure, all those kinds of things. So, um, uh, so, so uh, that those will be, um, that will be then rolling out uh, starting in Q2, where we will, um, uh, uh, where, 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 where um, we will be helping them finish up their integration into the new APIs. We'll be really, we're, we're in the process of refreshing all of the documentation for all of the um, additional people that would like to build for mainnet two or, um, or for, for permissionless releases um, uh, 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 following mainnet two. And, um, um, and, and we're, you know, we'll be starting to, a after the vaults release, we'll be starting to um, spin up our, um, uh, uh, to spin up our um, developer program for not just the mainnet two developers, but the much broader spectrum of developers out there, um, uh, both you know in the Cosmoverse and in in the the, the mainstream world. So that's all. We have a lot to do. Um, you know, sort of get this release out. Um, uh, 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 I think maybe Roland's back and may have things to, to say, but um, uh, Jesse will expand on that in a minute. Um, and then we will be moving, as I said, towards mainnet two, celebrating the you know liquid staking uh, uh, implementation, um, lending protocols for NFTs, and the NFT marketplace, um, asset management, and those uh, th those projects that you can find on our um, you know under our ecosystem page on our website. So, um, so with that, tell us what it's going to take, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, I don't think we have enough time to go through all of my forms, but <laughs> um, I've been thinking quite a bit about what we're going to be up to in 2023, and really most of what we're going to be working on is continuing to do the risk management that we kicked off a year and a half ago uh, with some of the first audits that we did at the platform. Um, we have a pretty complex system, and we have a wider ecosystem that's also complex and interconnected and this amazing thing that we need to do a lot of reasoning about. So we're just going to keep on with audits, assessments. Um, this year, we're going to have quite a bit more threat modeling um, integrated into our design process so that we've really enumerated risk um, on, a, on a granular level. Uh, and we're going to keep investing in the work we've been doing with Modable uh, on fuzzing XS because that helps us out for mainnet three. Uh, there's a couple places where our security team has also stepped back and said, well, hey, wait a second. Uh, there's some other folks who maybe could benefit from knowing more about incident response who might want a little bit of guidance about how they should be thinking about security, what to do next. And so we also are gonna have this be the year where we focus on contributing more to the wider interchain, especially around um, some of the strategic security priorities that our, our lovely Cosmos code needs um, some help with. And we're going to pitch in on the emergency coordination and incident response front. You know, when we started building Cosmos forever ago, um, we figured out a few things for the Cosmos hub, but when you have 70, 80 more chains all connected to each other operating on top of it. It really makes for quite uh, quite the process and quite the scaling problem on the security front. So we're excited to jump in there. Um, a thing that's coming up specific to vaults is that we are planning for um, we're planning for vaults launch, of course, and all the audits and things that we like will be happening to support that. But um, we want to do more work on the, on the testing side and DevNet just to help qualify the software and maybe challenge some of the security, um, the security assumptions baked into it that we're working on. So what that's going to mean is instead of um, when, when we get a release candidate, you know, maybe we have an adversarial um, testing program where we're working out the vault liquidation mechanism that's new. Uh, maybe we come up with a few MEV challenges uh, just to see what's possible, but we definitely want to do more in terms of um, connecting with other folks and pitching in to help in our wider um, 
in our ecosystem, but also in our wider communities. Um, on the community front, uh, we do have some pretty big goals for this year. And a lot of them have to do with just building a strong foundation for um, our community and making it easier to find information and solve some of the problems or get good answers to questions um, that come up if you know the first time you hear about Agoric is at a conference and you want to know how to get involved and what to do. A big part of that will be investing more in discourse as our main um, public square or our forum where we have community conversations. And a few ways we've talked about um, investing in that a bit more include maybe sharing some of our uh, development meeting updates on a weekly basis and just making sure that we're kicking off community threads about some of the more pressing issues, both in our industry and maybe in our ecosystem or the interchain. Another thing um, on the- Transparency. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing on the community front uh, that we're thinking about too, because a strong, a strong community is really, really important for strong security, is looking at our chain and how it operates. Um, our validators have done such a fantastic job in getting us hooked up to other networks and helping us out when we've had ridiculous bugs we needed to squish. And that's really helped us think about operational baselines uh, but also um, some of the areas where we can support our node operators. Maybe we have some automated response that helps um, if the chain goes down or quits producing blocks, or we have run books so that everyone knows what to do and we can write you know, any hiccups that come up in day-to-day -day chain ops. Um, the other thing that we're, we're working on for 2023 too is preparing uh, for the delegation program security reviews. As many of you know, there is quite a long form that comes with it. It may be longer this year. I have more questions to ask. Um, but the protocol doesn't really give us a way um, to manage risk and to see into some of the finer grain choices that our operators make. And so when we get this information, it really is important for us uh, because we're able to put it to use in terms of thinking about, you know, well, is there a project that could be funded by the community pool that, that a validator could be encouraged to take on? Um, all kinds of things like that. On top of that, um, our, one of our other big goals for mainnet is to really get into a regular update cadence uh, with our network upgrades for the chain. Part of this is because we just wanna make sure for our most important dependencies, um, we have a good upgrade cadence and if there are security bugs, we wanna be patched again. Um, we update regularly enough that it's just normal and it doesn't take um, it doesn't take, you know, pulling in all the troops and a major operation to get that done. And that means we'll get to hang out with our validators more, which is fine by me because they've got pretty good jokes and I like good jokes. Uh, but I'm super, super excited about um, super excited about what we have coming up this year and just watching things continue to grow and flourish and be amazing. We know you just like the interns, you know, bantering back and forth. Oh my God. <laughs> I need at least 12 more Cosmos interns. Uh, and I'm hiring an Agoric intern. So hit me up. Y'all know where my DMs are. Just saying. <laughs> One battle of the interns though. That's what oh I want my to God. I can't wait. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. I think Jeet's around. He had a, a thing on 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 uh, delegation stuff. If he's uh, oh, if I he's think available. he's only a listener. Hold on, Jeet, come speak. Well, he can come after after Rick. Let's pop, let's pop Rick up, and then we can follow up. Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. Thanks, Dean, and thanks, Santi. Uh, talking about DCF and looking forward to twenty twenty three. Uh, I think probably the best place to start is just to sort of provide some context and calibrate a bit, which is in 2022, really the foundation just got started, right? Uh, we didn't even really spin up uh, active operations until Q1 of last year. And the whole uphill climb of getting a uh, Cayman's Islands foundations into uh, traditional business mechanisms has taken more time than we expected. Things, basic things like setting up bank accounts, uh, getting insurance, et cetera, et cetera, has, has been a really time consuming challenge. But we've 
got all of those gears in motion at this point, and a lot of the foundation work is done. And so on that basis, I'm looking forward to 2023 as really being the year that the DCF starts to act as a flywheel for the ecosystem. And that's, that's for Agoric, and that's putting a lot of, of support behind Interprotocol as well. And it's also looking more broadly across Cosmos IBC and helping support some of the really interesting stuff that Jesse is doing on the security side of things and strengthening the relationships with our validators. Um, for those of you that track DCF across this last year, you'll know that we have a substantial portion of our treasury per, uh, currently staked within, Cosmo, within Agoric Delegators. We're going to be reviewing those relationships uh, across the next quarter. We're going to participate in that delegation program security review that Jesse uh, mentioned a while ago. So, so heads up, all of you. I see a lot of names on this Twitter space that will be affected by that uh, or who may want to participate in a different way or further. And we certainly welcome that. And we appreciate the support you guys have been giving us. We're also looking in early 2023 to get our act together and launch a grants program. Uh, the exact nature of that grants program is being defined. We're looking to hire against that. We're also looking at uh, hackathon opportunities to support the Agoric ecosystem. And we'll probably do those in partnership with Agoric. Uh, we're exploring some options for that right now. We're also going to make sure the DCF is more visible uh, at Cosmos ecosystem events this year. So uh, a lot of the trade shows and such, if uh, Agoric is there, you're likely to see DCF and Interprotocol there as well. So look for us and say hi, please. And of course, 2023, we're looking to capitalize on the work that's been done with Interprotocol to date and, and really beef up support for Interprotocol going forward. I mean, to this stage, we've really focused our efforts on getting the economic committee uh, to be a functional entity. And, and that's really exceeded expectations as far as I'm concerned. But to provide more support for those guys, um, you know, in response to the community request, we are providing the compensation, the budget for the Economic Committee. Uh, let's see how that works out for us across the next year. We'll also be working with the Economic Committee around security protocols uh, and getting things tightened up over there so that everyone's comfortable with uh, the fail safes and the systems that we have in place. And then to support all of this, uh, we are about to engage in some hiring, some strategic hires that will staff up DCF, give us more resources, allow us to engage more fully on specific critical projects like Inner Protocol. So I think 2023, Ooh. I mean, as I stand here right now, I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be incredibly busy. I think a lot of things are gonna jump forward. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. Any comments, questions? I love it. I'm so glad you're aboard, Rick. <laughs> no, thanks, Dean. Glad to be here. Oh, and, and is it too late to say Happy New Year? Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year. Absolutely. Um, let's bring Gene up real quick. Uh, if you want to fill in the, 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 on, the, on the delegation book, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks, Dean. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, I'd like to just say that we will be um, doing a couple of things coming up so soon uh, for the validator delegation program. Uh, the first of which is being, um, we'll be sending out an additional amount of build to uh, validators who have met certain uh, security criterion that we've established. Um, so that will be going out here in the next bit of time. And also, more importantly, one announced that we'll be um, opening up applications for another round uh, for anyone who wants to join the validator delegation program. So please just keep an eye out on the different uh, channels we have um, on our um, Discord. And as well, just reach out to me as well um, if you have any questions about this. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, hope, hope to, and hope to talk soon. Another time. You mean you mean in the next week or so, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so more delegation heading out before we do the second, the, the, the next round, which will be, um, uh, uh, which which will not be in the next week. <laughs> Good. Um, thank you, and thank you, Rick. Back to you, uh, Santi. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just close this quickly. Um, hey, Dean, did you know you're uh, speaking at Interop? <laughs> I did know I'm speaking at Interop, and I even okay, know that good. it's in Denver. Yes, it is in Denver. <laughs> so February 27th, 28th, Agoric will be at Interop, which is a, a summit um, for basically, you know, it's an interchain developer conference put on by Axelar, um, good friends of ours and tech partners. Um, and it's going on, you know, right through um, East Denver, which is also in Denver. Um, so that'll be a really exciting kind of couple of days. Um, 
So if you are there, definitely let us know. We'll have a presence. I think, uh, Rick, I think Inner Protocol is also likely to join. Um, yes, that's correct. We are likely to join, though we haven't figured out exactly who. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, uh, and I think, you know, just a general statement that, you know, we're, we're always looking at, you know, our international audience. Um, you know, we've been, we've been, you know, going back and forth and, and, and working on a program that's going to help uh, folks who want to do meetups internationally, you know, around Agoric, um, you know, do that a lot easier, you know, through support and, uh, uh, and guidance. Um, so, you know, that's something we're going to be rolling out, I think, at some point in Q1, um, because we really want to start, you know, we have people coming to us saying they want our events and, you know, we want to support them, right? We want, we want to give them the tools to actually do that. Um, and so that's something you should, uh, you know, keep an eye out. Um, and other than that, yeah, I think, I think I'll, I'll, I'll plug it here as well, but I think Inter Protocol's next community call is on next week, January 19th, the 9.30 Pacific. Um, so that's happening, yeah, a week from, a week from today, basically. Um, so definitely stop by that if you're, if you're around. And yeah, is there anything else we want to uh, cover that we might have missed or any, you know, questions? I think we have, what, a minute? <laughs> uh, someone has a quick question. Happy New Year! It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be busy, uh, but but I'm really excited. You you know, I just can't express how excited I am having the model and the the, the Zoe and the ERTP all starting to now actually you know all now live, all now starting to be available. Um, I'll, you know, we will have very excited announcements when there's another round of documentation, that kind of thing. It's just you know, it's it's all starting to be real, and it's 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 amazing. Amazing. Yeah, excited for it. I would also say as more people start to play with our platform, if you think you might have found a security bug, check out <laughs> agoric.com slash security. There's always someone on rotation at security at agoric.com uh, if you think you found a bug. And we are happy to work with anyone who wants to help make our platform stronger and more resilient by squishing the bugs out of it. Excellent. Absolutely. All right. I think, I think that wraps us up then. Thank you, everybody who spoke. And uh, to our audience for joining again. And yeah, we, we look forward to seeing you uh, next month on our, on our community call. Thanks, everyone. Glad to be Thanks, here. Thanks, everybody.